Hey, this is Jorge from BeardDiveProject.com and today I want to talk about using iodine. Uh, actually, I want to share with you how I use iodine uh, for uh, hypothyroidism. Now, I think out of all the topics that I've come across, this is probably the one that, um, you know, where I came across the most amount of conflicting information and, you know, people pulling the hardest as far as like, no, you shouldn't use it. And then some like, yeah, you should use it. Um, and so... After all the uh, research that I've done, and trust me, I'm well aware of um, you know all the things, and so um, I'm well aware of many things. I guess I should say that I read as far as the use of iodine, and so as I talk about this, you know, I'm going to share with you a few things that I think um, you need to keep in mind. Um, you know, and I hesitated to uh, share how I use uh, iodine for this uh, specific reason, but um, you know, now that I've uh, been around for a little bit and tried different things, research, and you know, met some other people that are um, you know doing the same things, um, you know, I feel a little bit uh, better as far as uh, sharing what I do when it comes to this. And so, um, I'll just go ahead and get started. And so, this is basically a bottle of a uh, Lugol's uh, solution iodine, and all I do. Um, as far as uh, iodine is I take this local solution and I use it transdermal so basically I do about just three drops right here on my wrist just like that and I just basically rub that in right and so I just let my skin absorb the iodine um, another way that I may do it is you know I may take this uh, same iodine and just put it directly on my neck um, you know right where my thyroid is just like that and so <clears throat> when I first started researching um, iodine all I was reading about was whether you should take iodine or not, uh, you know, not take iodine. And so now the way that I take iodine, like I said, is mostly transdermal, but a lot of the foods that I eat also have iodine. Um, so like I have here, uh, you know, chlorella powder. Um, this is uh, blue green algae. So these are basically uh, seaweeds and I don't have any of uh, the other ones with me. Like um, spirulina is another one that I use, uh, dulce. Um, I think the, uh, out of like as far as foods for iodine the best that I've found is a brown seaweed extract and so I don't have any of that uh, with me but there's a few other things that I want to talk about when it comes to um, using uh, iodine because um, you know as far as iodine there's like this doesn't work by itself there's other things that make it work um, one of them is uh, selenium um, vitamin D and then um, the one that not many people talk about that I found is um, magnesium. Magnesium is a very important uh, mineral. Um, you know, it's something that I actually know from uh, brewing beer. Um, you know, in the absence of magnesium, um, I can't ferment, um, you know, beer or you know, do anything as far as a beer. And the body's kind of like the same way without magnesium. Um, you know, a lot of the things that our body would do, you know, wouldn't be possible. And so <clears throat> once I do iodine, you can see how, um, you know, that yellow is going to start basically um, disappearing because my skin is absorbing it and one way that you can help drive it in is um, this is pure magnesium hexahydrate and I just spray a little bit of that in into my skin and you know again just rub it in and um, you know magnesium oil this uh, it's a hexahydrate um, you have to you know use friction to basically push it into the skin um, but this, you know, by doing stuff like this, I started to learn, you know, other things about, you know, the body. So things that most people just are not very uh, well aware of. And so I want to share with you some of those, some of those things that I found. Um, but here we go. So I'm, I still have a little bit of yellow. So <clears throat> the skin's going to start absorbing it and, you know, let's see how they look um, once I'm done. But so um, here's, here's basically what I found and, you know, why I do iodine this way. Uh, why I found it to be a better, but basically, uh, as far as like the thyroid, um, you know, what I started to research and, you know, just to, um, you know, just for all, all the people that are watching this, I don't know where you're at as far as, uh, you know, how much you've researched, how much you know about this. I don't claim to be an expert. I'm just really sharing the things that I come across that are working for me. 
Um, so I don't know to what extent this is right or wrong. I'm just, again, sharing what I've learned um, and what makes sense to me. And so from what I understand, a thyroid hormone is basically um, tyrosine, which is a protein or I should say amino acid. So basically that plus um, iodine. So when you see uh, T3, for example, is one tyrosine and three iodine or iodide molecules, right? So you can have T3 is one tyrosine, three iodine, or T4 is one tyrosine and four iodine. That's basically all the difference between T3 and T4 is, you know, how many um, molecules of iodine there are in here. And so um, what I started to learn is, and I have here the uh, periodic table, um, there's a section here called the halides, so things like fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, they're all part of this little family right here. And so from what I understand, some of the things that I've researched is that in the body, um, things like fluoride, chlorine, bromine, they tend to displace iodine in space. So instead of... Uh, you know, instead of your T3 or T4 being one tyrosine and four iodine, you may have fluoride basically binding into this and essentially nullifying or canceling or, you know, basically uh, making this um, inactive. So I don't know the terminology, I don't know exactly how it works, but basically that's from, you know, my understanding is that, um, you know, if you have too much fluoride, too much, or if you lack iodine, your body tends to use some of these other elements in its place. And so <clears throat> from what I understand, um, well, you know, understanding that, I, I started to do a few things. One is I basically started to avoid things like fluoride, chlorine, bromine. And so if you look at, um, you know, my toothpaste, I don't think this one uh, says it, but this has no fluoride. Um, this is a Tom's toothpaste and you know, if you can read here, it says fluoride free. So I stay away from fluoride. Um, you know, same thing, chlorine. I actually have a, uh, a, a, chlor a chlorine uh, filter, um, you know, a shower dechlorinator basically. Um, so that way when I shower, because again, you know, if your skin absorbs things, um, you know, if you're taking a shower, your skin is basically absorbing chlorine. And so, again, I start getting, you know, basically getting rid of that, eliminating that from my life and adding more good things like iodine. Now, there's other things that you have to consider. And so and this is where, you know, you you have to do your own research because like I have, I didn't have any goiters or anything like that that I had to worry about, but there are other people who may have. Again, if you read my newsletter, um, you may you may know that my biggest problem as far as the thyroid wasn't so much that my thyroid gland wasn't working. It was, it was more that even though my thyroid gland was producing T4, the liver that converts T4 into T3 wasn't working. And so for me, it was more of a liver problem. I still had all the hypothyroidism issues because my liver wasn't converting T4 into T3. And so it was almost as if the thyroid gland didn't produce uh, T4 to begin with. Um, but so anyways, <clears throat> uh, since I've been using uh, iodine now, um, you know, one thing that I've heard is, okay, so if your body is toxic and and uh, you have things like fluor, um, you know, fluoride or chlorine or bromine, uh, bromine, which is found in a lot of breads, by the way. Um, if you know, if you have a lot of that in your system, well, the moment that you start filling your body back up with iodine, well, some of these um, other uh, uh, halides like fluoride, chlorine, you know, they, they'll they basically let go of the uh, tyrosine protein. And so now you're gonna have a problem of flushing that out. And so that's a, that's the reason why I started using a lot of uh, Celtic uh, sea salt because this is supposed to help basically bind those and help your body flush it out and basically get it out of uh, your body. And so um, this is basically um, you know what I wanted to share because this is like the most simple explanation. Um, and again, you know I'm not doing this as an expert, so you know if um, if something I said here you know it's not exactly uh, correct. Um, that's not the point. I'm not here to be right. I just want to share with you the ideas or the things that I kind of come across um, just as a way to give you the uh, logic behind the way that I do, you know, things. The, you know, the reason why I use iodine transdermal and I don't I don't really take uh, iodine supplements like, um, you know, I don't unless it's uh, chlor um, chlorella, spirulina, 
blue um, blue green algae, brown seaweed extract, dulce. Some of like the uh, seaweeds that have a lot of iodine. That's basically the way that I get uh, my iodine. Um, but really, if I'm gonna uh, actually supplement, then it's going to be a Lugol solution and it's going to be transdermal. I don't take it uh, orally. And I think that by doing that, a lot of the things that you're gonna read online as far as, uh, oh, this is you know taking iodine when you have hypothyroidism is bad or whatever. I think this kind of uh, eliminates all of that. But then again, you have to understand that in my prob my case, my problem wasn't exactly um, you know that I'm like I'm I'm not growing like a goiter or anything, which I think it's a different um, you know it's kind of like a different level of uh, hypothyroidism or you know a different uh, root cause. I guess that uh, would be the proper way to say it. Um, and so if that's your case, then take this information and improve upon it, and you know basically see what part of this works for you and what part doesn't um, but if you're more like me that you know maybe your gland is working and a lot of, a lot of people that i've met that you know have hypothyroidism issues their gland is working just fine it's usually the liver the kidneys or their colon or something else that's actually um you know affecting the uh thyroid uh, hormone production and so um anyways um I think that's all I wanted to uh, share with you today. I hope you found this uh, video helpful. And, you know, I look forward to uh, seeing you in some of my other videos. All right, I'll talk to you later.